The one-way ANCOVA, um, there's a few different applications of this, uh, also known as the analysis of covariance. It's a multivariate statistical method in which the dependent variable is a quantitative variable and the independent variables are a mixture of uh, nominal variables and quantitative variables. This is the way that they define it from SAGE publication. Um, from lay high education, they look at ANCOVA as analysis of covariance um, where it's used to test the main and interaction effects of categorical variables on a continuous dependent variable controlling for the effects of selected um, other continuous variables which co-vary with the dependent. The control variables are also known as covariates and we're going to look at something similar to that today. I know these definitions sound a bit complicated but the test in itself is actually um, relatively straightforward and I think once we get into it you'll get a better understanding of what I mean by that. And lastly from Laird statistics, um, they look at ANCOVA as you know, the one way ANCOVA is used to determine whether there are any significant differences between two or more independent unrelated groups on a dependent variable. However, where the ANOVA, which we looked at last week, looks at differences in, or not last week, but the previous session, looks for differences in mean groups, the ANCOVA looks for differences in adjusted means. And so the mathematics behind it are um, a little bit different, but they still will help you with essentially your multiple groups for analysis. So here's some examples where it would be appropriate to use the one-way ANCOVA. Um, you know, in experimental designs when you're trying to control for factors which cannot be randomized but which can be measured on an interval scale. Um, we also have in observational designs to remove the effects of uh, variables which modify the relationship of the categorical independence to the interval dependent variable because we're always looking at the effect of the variables onto the dependent variable which is our variable of interest. Um, in regression models, we can use it to fit regressions where there are both categorical and independent um, and interval independence. So we'll look at the uh, statistical assumptions because all statistical tests have assumptions and, and uh, there's quite a number for the ANCOVA and it's important to be able to meet all of these assumptions uh, before you go ahead and commit yourself to using the ANCOVA. So the dependent variable and covariate variable should be measured on a continuous scale. The uh, independent variable should consist of right, two or more categorical independent groups. This is similar to you know, ANOVA and, and uh, the t-test and such. We should always have independence of observations and that's really critical when you have um, any of the test of means uh, with the exception of the pair of t-test. You want to make sure that your samples are only within one group, not a blend of, um, not associated with uh, the two or other groups that are in, that you're analyzing. There should be no significant outliers in the differences between the two related groups or the two or more related groups and, and outliers can always skew your uh, results quite significantly um, but one thing that's important to remember about outliers is sometimes when you investigate the outlier uh, participant or the outlier data point um, those tend they can sometimes be the most interesting of all of your data. Um, when we consider the residuals, they should be approximately normally distributed for each category of the independent variable. And there should be, of course, the homogeneity of variances, which you can test with the Levine's test. The um, covariate should be linearly related to the dependent variable at each level of the independent variable. And since we're using multiple variables, I said you want to make sure that there's a linear relationship with that covariate, the covariate variable that you're interested in. Of course, we have homocedacity of the standardized uh, residuals, and this is a little bit different than other statistical tests where we're just considering homocedacity. These, uh, we actually take the residuals and then we standardize them, or actually SPSS will do that for you. And then we have homogeneity of regression slopes, and um, analysis of homogeneity of regression slopes and homocedacity of the standardized residuals, it's a little bit beyond um, our webinar for this morning, but it's definitely something that you can uh, look up either uh, on the web or in some of the textbooks that we have.